Thank you for joining us for live paranormal radio. From the paranormal to the unexplained, it all happens here. It all happens here. Looking to enhance your radio experience? Participate in our live video chat 24-7 with our live paranormal radio show host and other like-minded people. Live. Paranormal.com, the only interactive social chat room supported by Full Interaction Media. Stop by now and join the fun. Stop by now and join the fun. Well, I guess they are not going to play the Channeling Eric Hour of Enlightenment uh, intro, so I don't know what's up with that, but... Hey guys, this is Elisa Medhus, Eric Medhus's mom, mommy, and uh, you know, as many of you guys probably already know, that Eric is my 20-year-old son that died, and now he is a spirit guide. And via this radio show, as with his blog, Telling Eric, he's going to spread a little wisdom around, and he is also going to answer questions for you, just to help us get through the freaking difficult human experience he's so full of wisdom i used to be a teacher i used to teach him his multiplication tables his abcs and all that but look at this he's teaching me and others and i'm just i couldn't be prouder i am so blessed to have kim babcock here eric's spirit translator she's just so wonderful and such a good soul so i want you guys to welcome her please and i think what we'll do first is yeah uh, uh, kim uh, you know i'm uh, I know you probably want to do some introduction of yourself, but I will say that you guys can find out a lot more about her through www.kimbabcock, B-A-B-C-O-C-K, dot net. Kim, is there anything else you'd like to say before the, the man himself starts to talk? Absolutely, that's right. You guys can find me on my website and on social media across the board. I'm on Instagram and Twitter also. Um, you can find me on Facebook, but I want to take a quick minute just to thank all of you guys. Um, there's, you guys put so much into the blog and so much into Eric and, and spreading Eric um, around and sharing the, the Eric stories with your friends and your family, sharing your encounters. That's the type of stuff that's going to keep this whole process moving, keep this whole awakening happening among everybody around us. So I want to thank all of you guys for um, for tuning into these shows, for um, you know being an active member on the blog. It really means more than you know. And to all of my clients, I thank you all so very much for believing in what we do. It means the world to us to be here for you guys. So we we are excited. Tonight we have an awesome awesome topic that I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate to um, in one way or another, and that is we've been talking to Eric about how to move on from a painful past, how to let go. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. Yes, it's so difficult. I, I know that in my life uh, I was raised by two physicians that were the pillars of, communi- of the community, and, you know, they were both mentally disturbed, of psychopaths, basically, and with narcissistic borderline personality disorder and we were beaten and abused emotionally and physically so much i mean my father wow. broke my 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 sister's skull two of my sisters fled the 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 pain to become homeless for a long time so it took a long time for all of us to process through that uh but we did and we came out stronger but i i know there are more stories out there about this but again Kudos to you, blog members. You have been part of the family, part of my family, and I just yeah. love you all. I mean, you, you, you alone make my son's death not a tragic waste, and I just I love you for that. Yeah, Eric, absolutely. what do you have to say about the topic? You want to dive right in? He says, "Of course, Mom. I always want to dive right in." <laughs> Of course you do, baby. Um, I love you, by the way, in case you forgot or didn't know. He says, I love you, by the way, in case you forgot or didn't know. <laughs> he's I never been, would do um, that. He's been goofy this week. He's been mocking people and teasing people, but just in a playful, loving way. So um hope you guys are ready for it. <laughs> he says he wants to dive right in. So 
she says, when we look at talking about a painful past and why is it so hard to move on from a painful past, even if it was if it was 25 years ago or if it was just yesterday. I had a, a shitty day yesterday. Why can't I move on today? Why can't I have a better day today? He says, well, there's there's a lot of key factors that everybody seems to forget, whether you're the one going through it or whether you're helping somebody go through it, whether it's dealing with a loss that happened so many years ago or a difficult day. He says, the only real way that you're going to be able to move on from that painful past is when you process and heal from it. You can't really say, okay, it's time to suck it up and move on because you're really... He says, in that in that moment, if you just forced yourself to suck it up and move on, you really didn't give yourself time to process and and heal from what you experienced. You have to ask yourself what that experience meant to you. Try to learn from it if you can, and in that, you'll begin to heal from it. But if you tell yourself or force yourself to suck it up and move on, you're not going to be able to properly heal from it. It's going the emotions of it are going to continue to follow you and resurface until you give them, your own emotions, the opportunity to be processed. So if you're trying to help somebody, maybe it's a friend going through a loss. Um, If you're trying to help them through it, it's okay to try to help help them see the light of day and help them see that it's going to get better. But it really doesn't make sense to tell someone to sort of um, suck it up and get over it. Okay, it's time to move on. It's been two years. He says, because it, what takes time for one person to process from something might take, what takes one person two years, might take somebody else two months, might take somebody else four years. Well, yeah, you may never get over it. Like, for example, Eric died six years ago, and I will always be a little broken. And there's not a day that goes by that I just wake up and my stomach just turns thinking about the fact that I don't have his body to, to hug, to kiss. I mean, I still have a relationship with him, but it's obviously not the same as having him in the physical too. So, uh, and, and yeah. you know, I don't, I don't, I don't expect to ever completely get over it, and that's okay. You know, you just have to find a new normal. Yeah, he says part of that, mom, is being able to move on. Is um, your, your, he says your ability to be adaptable. Um, if if you can adapt to that change and understand your new sense of normal, that's going to help you process. That's going to help alleviate the heaviness of some of the emotions. You depends on what you're going through. You may never make a full recovery from something that you're going through, but you can accomplish healing. And when, he says, when you allow yourself to change with the way events around you are changing or the way life changes. Your routine might change. The people you see might change. And when you allow that change to, co- to come in and take place naturally um, instead of resisting it, being more adaptable is going to, to make the whole process a little bit easier. It's going to make it a little bit lighter. <coughs> Excuse me. And he says... Um, in that that ability to be adaptable, you're going to find yourself processing. When when things have changed, okay, um, my relationship changed. I, I got a divorce. Now this is my new normal. This is my new routine. Okay, so this is how my day is different, he says. That's how you begin to process. You, you have to allow yourself that time. If you deny yourself, I'm just going to avoid it. I'm just going to move on completely. Or an example of the divorce situation, he says, if you just automatically start dating right away and you deny yourself the emotions of of what the divorce caused you to feel, eventually they're going to come back. They're going to resurface. So you have to give yourself time to at least feel that and process it. He He's also encouraging everybody listening. He says, I have to tell you, you guys have to work on being compassionate with yourselves and with others even more so than you already think you are. If you think you're compassionate, try even harder, he says, because a lot of you, he's kind of, 
he's kind of laughing, but it's not at anybody. It's laughing with, like, the surprise element, like he's surprised. He says, a lot of you are hard on yourselves when you're going through something. You, you're hard on yourselves. Why can't I get over this? Why can't I let go? She's already over it. Why am I not over it? Or why why am I still struggling? He says, you have so to be true. compassionate. There's a process that is unique to every one of you. And that process is not going to be the same for anybody. So he says, when you think you're being compassionate with yourself or someone else, dig a little deeper. He says, be a little more compassionate. He's being real direct, <laughs> like you know, like a father, like cracking Aww. down, he says. Daddy but, Eric. Yeah, he says it's so true. He says people need more compassion than what, even, what, again, when you think you're being compassionate, dig deeper, he says. Well, other says, than that, how do you get over it? To, to me, I, it helped me to, like like you said, process it and think about it. But what what helped me with my past is to figure out, okay, what did I get out of it? And there's always, always something you can get out of pain. All pain has value. And once I realized what I got out of it, then it was really easier to for me to let go to embrace it and let go. I mean, if I had not had my childhood, the, the difficult childhood I had, I would not have been assertive. I would not have been as nurturing of my own children or compassionate toward others. I just know I would have probably been just a shallow boor. So in a way, and I know this sounds so counterintuitive, but in a way I'm really grateful for what I went through. You have anything to say about that, Eric? Can Eric, as Maria yeah. used to tell you, call he you? says um, he says what well, what you went through in your childhood partially helped prepare you for dealing with um, losing me, Mom. He says. Oh yeah, I know. But it helped you. It helped you be, um, I guess, more assertive in your ability to reflect on on it and learn from it because as you were growing up. It was much harder to see at that time, but as an adult, going through the loss of a child, you were you had that stronger um, ability to be able to see. Okay, this is what I'm going to take away from this. But also in yeah. that poem, he says, you and so many people too have to be able to look at their attachments. You have to be emotionally honest with yourself, and a lot of people don't. This is the part where they they check out says I'm done they just deny they say I'm done I'm walking out because they don't want to get that emotionally real with themselves because it hurts so if it's going through a divorce if it's going through the loss of a loved one you have to acknowledge the attachment you have to the role that that person played in your life Mm -hmm. and if you can identify that attachment he says then you can kind of carry that over into preparing yourself for how that's going to change and then again, when you can be more adaptable and sort of surrender to that change, you're going you're gonna to suffer less. The struggle will be less, less intense. But if you continue to fight the way things are changing emotionally too, you're going to be stuck in that phase of grief. He says... Yeah, what you resist persists, you know? If you yeah, fight against says, something, if you resist something, that's the, the root of suffering. Exactly. And he says... Um, Sometimes the loss of a loved one, the loss of a person, you don't you don't ever fully recover. You don't ever completely get over. But you do learn how to cope with it. You learn how to deal, and um, you you learn how to adapt. How how things are different. It's just a um, a way of of being adaptable, I guess. And he shrugs his shoulders and throws his head back. He says, um, if you resist that and you don't adapt, that's when struggling occurs. That's when you see people really struggle to um, stay motivated in life. You see them fail to thrive in life. They kind of forget, um, give up on everything, and including themselves. So if you had to sum it up, you know, give, give the listeners like three, four, five tips on how to let go of a painful past. The first thing he says is um, adapt to your new normal. Adapt to your new sense of your new routines, the way things are different. Learn how to be more adaptable. Quit resisting 
the way things are changing. He says things are always going to change. So, and that takes it, be, uh, being understanding and patient with yourself. Exactly, being compassionate with yourself. He says. Mm. Um, so be adaptable, be compassionate with yourself and others. Um, ooh, he also said, allow others to be compassionate towards you. Because sometimes when people go through something difficult and others are offering that compassion, they they uh, tend to push it away. People can push that away because, mm-hmm. like, you don't understand what I'm feeling. Let me deal with what I'm feeling. Um, so allow others' compassion in, too. And be able to be emotionally honest with yourself and identify your attachments. Because if you can identify those, you can help yourself change and then adapt to that change. Right. Anything else? He's he's wiping his brow. He goes, goes, oh, Mom, wasn't that good? Oh, that was so awesome, baby. And that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, are you ready to take on callers then? He says, why don't we, Mom? Let's do it. He says, he's yeah, being why real not? mushy. What the heck? <laughs> oh, mushy baby. Uh, so, listen, I want to uh, express my gratitude for the radio network, LiveParanormal.com. Yeah. I, I want yeah. you guys to check, it, check them out. They're really cool people. They've got some great shows, so check them out. Now, uh, let's see what the first caller has to say. Hello, I'm talking to you from the Channeling Eric Hour of Enlightenment, area code 678. Have you, what is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Kathleen. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. How are you? Hey, Kathleen from Atlanta. Hi. What you got Hello. for Eric? Hi. I'm sorry? What question have you ha- do you have for Eric? Well, mine's a quick one. Uh, I hope to keep it quick so that everybody else gets a turn, but... Um, Eric, um, hi, Kim, and uh, Eric, can you please help me find something that I tucked away to keep it safe? I, um, I put away my, my, my husband and my passport about a year ago uh, because we were going out of town and we were having um, people were going to be coming in and out of the house while we were gone. So I tucked them away somewhere in a very safe place. I have a no idea safe. where. Kathleen, <laughs> a little bit too safe, huh? A little bit too safe, absolutely. Too safe Can for, you safe please? You do. Exactly, exactly. And my husband's about ready to kill me. So uh, oh. I figured, who, who better to ask than Eric? Oh, this is great. This is great. I do this kind of stuff all the time. You know that safe place? Yeah, it's a little too safe sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, he is saying, this is what he is showing me. He's giving me, like, image. Um, Okay, he makes me feel like I see see some stacked drawers, and then I feel like if I were to take these drawers out and then look Mm -hmm. behind there, I feel like like these documents are down in between. Like, they're not in an actual drawer or... um, a folder or a space like that. I feel like they have fallen down in between, like, Oh, I have lost space. socks that way. I have, you know, where you mm-hmm. have stuff in the drawer, and then you have to take the drawers out to get to the socks that kind of fell behind because you can't close the, the drawer yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. Wow. That's, Ooh. Kind of, that's what he's showing me. What it's co- like it's some weird in-between space. Like, I feel like it kind of fell, went out up over the top of the drawer and fell down in between. There's some in-between space that he's hes not using words. He's giving me all pictures. So that's what I see. I hope that that helps you find those documents because <laughs> I know that they are a pain to, to get passports, and they cost money. So I hope oh, that that helps. Absolutely. Hey, so for, for, absolutely. Forget, the, uh, forget the Easter basket hunt, the Easter egg hunt. You need to go <laughs> passport hunting, Kathleen. I need to no go kidding. on a passport hunt, yes. So does, check it, your is drawers. he showing you any colors of anything? Like is it clothes? Like closed drawers, or are they? Is it like, um, like, um, like in with bills or something? Or I think is he it's showing you in, any? Um, I think it's in with paperwork. I don't know that it's in with Ugh. clothing. That makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah, shoot. it does. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much, and um, 
I'll be listening. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. And uh, Alisa, I'm always just so amazed by you. Thanks for everything you do. Oh, don't be. I've got so many flaws. I don't even want to share them with you. It would very much disappoint you. (laughs) But Kathleen, thank you. No, seriously. Yes. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Man, I hope she finds it. Gosh. I know. I know she will. I just feel it. I feel it. Eric, will she find it? He says she will as as soon as she surrenders with her from her frustration. And I have to tell you, um, I had something very similar happen a few months back as um, mm-hmm. a PTA. I had to every so often you have to provide proof of your continuing education courses, right? So one of my certificates was lost. I could not find it and tore oh. me off apart. Couldn't find it. I had 24 hours to get it to the state board. I gave up. I was like, Eric, please help me. I give up. And I just quit looking. And I just had this weird urge to go downstairs and look at this random dresser, and I just found it. I was like, I have no idea why the hell it was in that drawer and that weird dresser, but there it was. Wow. I mean, I surrendered completely. And thank God for Eric. <laughs> because So, Kathleen, if you're listening, surrender. All right, let's take another yeah. caller. Let's see what's going on here. Area code 347. Hi, how are you? Hi again. How are you guys? I'm doing fine. What is your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Jillian from New York. Oh, hi. Yeah, you. <laughs> okay. What, what questions do you have for Eric today? Um, hi, Eric. Yeah, I have something um, interesting to ask. Um, this happened a long time ago, um, and I just want to know what it means and if it's going to be a reality for me. Um uh, a long time ago, I was having a lot of experiences with non-physical, and um, I kind of went out of my body, and um, I went to this place, this really nice, serene place, and this little boy came up to me and said to me, um, I'm going to be your son, and this <gasps> is what I'm going to look like when I'm five years old. Oh. And then I was like, oh, uh, all right, and then uh, soon after that, uh, a little girl came up and said, "This, I'm going to be your daughter, and this is what I'm going to look like when I'm three years old. And I never figured out what that was about. I don't have kids now, and is is that something that's going to be a reality for me? And do I have a husband to help me take that's an exciting question? Take care of I'm it. Eric, tell me. Yeah, that is maybe awesome. she'll have twins. What what's going on, Eric? <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, Eric was answering your question before um, when you said I had an experience um, when I a while ago, and I was wondering if it's going to be my reality. Um, right then, he said, started shaking his head, yes. Um, so know uh-huh. that he he says that you have an ability yeah. to um, just to be able to astral project to be able to gain information. So whether you intend to do it or not, um, that's what happened. You um, gathered gained information from the astral plane. Um, Jillian, and that's where so you met. cool. Yeah, he says this yeah. is where you met your children, and this will be your reality. The little boy didn't yeah, look anything line? like me though. <laughs> Yeah, but it's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? Okay. Girls in patience. Now, when now, are you going to be? I don't Eric? have a husband, so. Oh, well, that's just a little trifling detail. Now, he seriously, says, Eric, what do you think? <laughs> When's that going to happen? He says, he says you will. Um, he's holding up two. I feel like we're talking about two years. Um, so as far as the time reference, he says two, give it two. I think he's talking about two years. But, well, um, when will she find the father? <laughs> that's yes. what I'm talking about. Um, I <laughs> he's kind of laughing, and he's like, "That's the part that you kind of need." <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> he says so gonna, um, uh, one year, one year and uh, eleven months to find the father. That's what you got. He says, "I'm I love kidding." It, Mom. He says, "Perfect," but no, he <laughs> says, "He says, but don't think." He says, "Don't limit yourself to thinking that." Um, you have <laughs> don't take this the wrong way that you have to have a father to have those children, but he makes me feel like there's still going to be a male coming into the picture in your life within two years, um, and then from there I feel like the children are going to happen pretty quickly. It almost actually feels like 
possibly twins or very close in age, back to back. Uh oh, shotgun wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Very okay. Cool. What a neat experience. That is awesome. Well, will they be twins? Yeah. A boy and a girl twin? I definitely see one of both. I see male and female. So, I Are think they going to so. be uh, the same pregnancy or will it be first one and then another pregnancy the other? Hmm, interesting. Um because he's he was making me feel like close back to back, almost like twins, but he does separate them. When you ask that, Elisa, he separates them. Oh, okay. So I don't think it's going to be twins. Nope. Okay, one at a time. Like good. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. My I feel like he, I feel like the boy is going to come heart. first. He says the boy will be first. Oh, I can't wait to meet him. He was so cute. <laughs> oh, that is. Then like and then the girl, know, the girl to rein him in, the girl to rein him in, and you know. Make him to the line. Yeah, he looks yeah. more like me. <laughs> he definitely looks awesome, more Jillian. like me. He like, like he had my personality, the way he presented himself. But he didn't look uh-huh. like me at all. The girl looked like me, but she didn't have my personality. She was very sassy. <laughs> oh wow, that is too cool. Very Jillian, you know you got cool. a sass factor. Jillian, I feel your fa- sass factor. I do. Well, I don't know. Yeah. About that. So I guess mine will say I'm sassy, but I don't think I am. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's gonna be fun. You got a big adventure ahead of you. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you. Talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Thank Thanks you. Love you. Love too. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, Eric. Let's take another one. Let's do it. Area code area code nine two eight. Who am I speaking with? Hello. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm from Sedona. Oh, lucky Sedona. you. We're going to go there. Please come and see us. Even I really, I really come, hope to. I hug. really do. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> um, I had a question. I, I mean, I saw the empath video on, on YouTube and, uh, I was just wondering if Eric had any sort of practical suggestions. Um, even just today, I went through an experience where uh, I was I was literally outside doing landscaping work and just absorbing like crazy, praying as much as I possibly could. But um, afterwards, I walk away just like completely crying, half vomiting, and just like all these emotions oh, and negative thoughts and all these sorts of things oh. that, like, don't feel like mine, but that I don't feel like I'm able to uh, release. Um, oh, baby, I and I'm just wondering... Oh. <laughs> thank you. Um, but, yeah, I'm just wondering if, if Eric has any sort of practical suggestions as far as what I can do to release those sorts of things um, and also maybe just protect myself or avoid those situations. I'm not sure. It's been something I've dealt dealt with for so long, and I'm just now coming to understand um, the blessing and the curse of it. Uh, So, yeah. Well, is is he an empath, Eric? Is he an empath? Tell me, let's, uh, you know, talk a little bit about him and his abilities. Yeah, he definitely is showing me um, the symbol to communicate that he's an empath. Um, and what that looks like is um, literally when you are in an environment, um, this is what he shows me. It's kind of cool. Um, when you're in an environment, you become invisible to it. And the reason why he, he says this or shows this is because it's like, think about it like this. Think about a chameleon. Um, uh-huh. They change colors. They become like their environment. So that's how he's describing you, like, um, or an empath, especially a, a strong empath. He calls you a very an, an empath to a very deep degree. And he mm. says um, you become like your environment, like a chameleon does. And sometimes that's good if you know how to structure it, but he says um, other times if you don't know how to organize and structure what you're feeling, it can make you literally just cave in. And um, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> turn into a mess. Mm. So he says, first of all, before we even talk about how how to protect yourself, let's talk about how to release. Um, yeah. He says, understanding, 
he says, when you when you feel certain things. And he says, this is a little side note for you specifically. He says, don't convince yourself that you're crazy because you're not. Okay. So just okay. <laughs> keep that as a side a side note. He says. But because people who are strong empaths often think that, like, why am I feeling this to this degree and then, you know, really happy and then really angry and all these emotions yeah. all over the place. That's an empath. Um, so he says to release these emotions or feelings that don't belong to you, you have to be able to identify them and address them as being separate from you. So okay. if it's the strong sense of anger that just comes over you and you're like, man, I don't know where this comes from, but I just feel angry and I know it's not me, then you need to address it as being and say, separate from And say, hey, this is not mine. This, yeah, this exactly. doesn't belong to me. Yep, yeah. exactly. Address it as being separate from you. It's not yours. You're not the source. And then putting up the barrier. So when you want to work on releasing, address each emotion first that is making you feel out of balance. Okay. And then literally just, he says, just picture it um, leaving you, but don't ever send something away with haste or anger, like, I'm so mad that I feel this. It's not mine. Go away. He says, don't do uh-huh. that. <laughs> just send it away with love energy. But um, then in order to protect yourself, <clears throat> he says, this is something that you personally need to work on um, a lot, uh, very strongly. Okay. Because yeah. You're just very sensitive, whether it's hanging out with friends, going to the grocery store. Um, you feel too much, and it's just very overwhelming. And um, the best ways to protect yourself, he, he said very loudly, <laughs> stake your claim. Yes. Stake your claim. Stake your claim. You are... What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, he says, um, stake your claim. To me... What that means is, and this is Eric speaking, he says, claiming your own body, your own space, that you are only going to feel the emotions that you're responsible for. Um, So basically not allowing any other emotions into your space. So claim you, claim your space, and be deliberate about that, he says. Um, Okay. He says, no, he says, you have... No offense, but he's going to call you out. He says you have issues with being able to say no to people and draw boundaries. Uh Uh Um, So he says kind of toughen up in that respect a little bit and be able to to have stronger boundaries around you. He says don't worry, people will will respect you for that. But it takes being emotionally honest with other people too. It's like, dude, I can't take this. You you are right now. It's like, uh uh-uh, no. This is yours. This is not mine. So, you know, it takes that. But, you know, guess what? You find out who your true friends are when you do that, right? That's very yeah. true. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So he says stake your claim. Um, claim yourself that only your emotions exist within you and everything else um, must go back to the universe. And, um, and, and be honest with the people around you. Um, be honest with yourself, too, in setting your boundaries. Make sure you can tell people how you're truly feeling. Don't take on more than you can handle because you kind of do that too much, he says. Yeah, um, I do a lot, all the time. It's, it's overwhelming. It's like the tidal wave a lot of times when I feel that. Like I don't, I, I do, um, even today I put a lot of effort into praying and into just trying to do that stake your claim kind of thing. But like today especially I, I felt like I'm like, like I really just like fucked it up. Like I, I, I did everything I possibly knew how to do, and I just got hit with this tidal wave of despair and anger and, like, yeah. well, you know. Maybe you need to say something like Eric would say, like, fuck you, energy that comes from somewhere else. You're yeah. not coming to my place. Adios, mofo. I mean, yeah, yeah. it doesn't belong to me. Like yep, exactly. This doesn't yeah. learn this from me, okay? I'm just saying. This is, I'm just, you okay, know. thank just, you. Yeah. But he says, but, uh, he says, the stronger that you can grow in in um, drawing those boundaries, the uh-huh. more you're going to be able to experience emotional balance. He says you have to mm-hmm. know when to say no. You take on okay. too much and you easily get overwhelmed. So um, start saying no. He says practice that. You really need to practice saying no to people. Okay. It doesn't make you a bad person, and it also doesn't make you um, incapable. So no, he's going incapable. No, no, and hell no. No, yeah. no, and hell no. 
Yeah, you need to have personal boundaries. He says that's that's the major source of all of this. Um, yeah. Okay. But he also it, says don't think that being an empath is a bad thing. Just learn how to structure it because okay. it, you can really use it to your benefit. So yeah, I, I want to ask a question. I want to ask that question. First, I want to say, because I'm supposed to, uh, that we are, you know, on this uh, the the radio courtesy LivePairNormal.com. So I really appreciate you guys checking them out. But yeah, what you know, what can we tell him, Eric, that is positive about him having this deep empathic connection that he has? Because that is not super common. He says, no, it's not. It's not super common, and it's not super easy to deal with. He says it can make you feel like you're fucked up in the head. He goes, but I promise you're not, <laughs> he says. Okay. Um, the good thing about being empathic is when you do learn how, how it works for you and then learn how to structure it, um, learn how to, and, and this is going to be personal to you, specific to you, learn how to turn it on and off because you can. And then he says you're going to be able to use the information that you're picking up on around you to your benefit. Let's say, for example, uh-huh. you're in a new environment and you don't know anything about it. You can start to turn on your feelers, he calls it, and feel it out. Is this a safe place I'm in? I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at. Um, or I'm around new people. Are these people trustworthy? Um, you can turn on your feelers when you meet new people, when you go to a new job interview. Um, is this person right for me? You know. So when you learn how to structure it, you can use it to your benefit you can also use it to help other people. He says, but yeah. that's going to be a while. He says, you need to work on you first. <laughs> okay. But he also says another good thing about it, too, when you can um, structure it in a way to where you feel like you're in control of it, you you will find <laughs> comfort. You will settle in and find comfort in knowing that you have a, a stronger connection to everything that has life force. He says eventually that will bring you comfort. Right now it's overwhelming, but it will bring yeah. you absolute comfort. So okay, it's thank how like you. powerful realize. that could be. Wow. Yeah, he's like, well, it's, thank it's, you for calling. Yes, thank you so much for calling. I hope that this helps. I really do. Absolutely. Yeah, you know what? I could tell you're a special guy. I really do. <laughs> I really can. Well, and, thank uh, you guys so much for what you do. Yes, you are so welcome. You. Thank you. Love you, baby. Okay. Love you, too. Bye. Bye-bye. Gosh, such a sweet wow, guy. Wow, that's, that's going to help a lot of people. I mean, th- th- I just felt there's something special about that guy. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, so sweet. Yeah, not kid, and yeah, sweet guy. Yeah. All right, well, let's check out another one. We've got one from the 760 area code. Hi. Oh, is that me? Hello? That is Hello. No, it's somebody else. No, of course it's you. <laughs> your turn, girl. What's your name and where are you uh, from? This is Naomi Goodell. Oh, my God, you. Hi. I'm <laughs> you from San Diego. I'm good. Oh, I'm doing it's, fine. I'm, she painted me the I most was... beautiful picture of Eric, and I'm so grateful. Oh, cool. Oh, I'm so happy you love it. It was, uh, Eric gave me quite the experience with it. It was really cool. <laughs> wow. Dream, oh, my apologies. I've been asking him to come to me in a dream, and then finally the night I finished, he came to me in a dream, and I was, I feel like I must have been channeling in the painting, you know, the energy of Mama Elisa, <laughs> because we mm-hmm. were playing. He finally appeared to me in my kitchen, and we were running around, and then he transformed into a little boy, and it was like the coolest thing. Oh, so, boy. Yeah. Hi, Eric. <laughs> well, what what question do you have for him? So I just my question is it's I was I was brought up in a very uh, indoctrinated Christian home, and I I married to somebody who's still I wouldn't say he's like super religious, but um, you know his family is it, it's an issue <laughs> it's an issue and today there was just a number of, of synchronicities with the blog with the semantics of good and evil and then. Um, this email I got from my brother-in-law talking about, it was just like a sermon, and the last five minutes of it was talking about um, how just the evil of, like, like he used Native Americans as an example and how they are worshiping these animals and how ultimately oh. it's 
themselves. And it was very, you know, it was very dogma. And um, yeah. I think I've gotten to the point where it's like, it just doesn't, it doesn't affect me in a way that like, I'm totally content with what I believe, where I'm at. And I'm little by little trying to share this with my husband. I don't know if it's going to, you know, I did a reading with Allison and there was like the the possibility that, um, you know, it, we may get to a point where he's just frustrated and, you know, more of the spiritual path that we're just going separate ways with. But I want to kind oh, of know, no. but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, it's one of those, like, I'm hopeful we're in love. There's no, it's not like grass is greener thing for me, but ultimately, I mean, it was a really cool reading that I had done and, and, you know, I know that I'm only going to be happiest when I'm fully operating from what's inside of me. And there's been, um, different things told to me, you know, from being a healer to like, just, I mean, the advice that Eric gave and that my higher self, which came through with multiple selves actually was like Reiki attunements. And then it starts, we'll start opening up more of the clairvoyance and all that stuff. But but that's not kind of where I'm trying to go. But it was um, my question. So I feel like I have this beautiful relationship with Jesus, and I loved the interview that Jamie had done, Jamie and Eric. And it's it's one of those things where it's like I'm still surrounded by so much um, in Christianity. We still on occasion go to the church, and it's 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 not that I can't handle it because I absolutely can. I'm content with where I'm at, like I said, but when I find myself in these conversations with people who are like quoting scripture and, you know, the Bible oh. being the inherent word of God. And, you know, it's so strong and I see so much fear in that. And I see like, obviously the manipulation of religion and how that came about, you know, the whole accepting Jesus is the only way, <laughs> truth in life, you know, yeah. quoting his words, I am the way of his life. And so I didn't know if this was possible to even bring in Jesus. <laughs> like, um, I, I kind of just want guidance on how to handle those situations, what to say, and, and whether or not I'm even doing a good job with what I've done so far and the way I've responded. You know, I don't know how much of it, how much of myself is operating in like, not defense because I'm not defensive over it, but I do feel some attack. I feel like. You know, they can't understand. I've slowly but surely been opening up about Eric and the channeling, you know, the blog and and finding that group and that outlet to share my experiences. Well, well, let's do something. Let's do something (laughs) unusual. And I don't, I don't know if it's possible because you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know how busy he is. I know. uh, Eric, Eric, can you bring in Jesus and uh, you know and and have Jesus give her Naomi a message about this? Ooh, this is going to be that? good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know la- one time I talked to him on the e-board and said, ah, he's busy. Jesus is busy. Okay. So okay. I don't know. He may be. But, uh, but go, go for it, Eric. See if you can get uh, the main man here. Okay. I think it's possible. He brought him forward okay. early today, and I just <gasps> turned into a ball oh. baby. I just cried oh. and cried on the phone with my clients. Oh. That's oh. when I have my encounters with him, and it's so amazing. I just did the other night, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, he's he actually is um, is bringing him forward. So I'm going to change my tone a little bit. And um, okay. wow, I love you, Jesus. And I get three, three, three all the time. Like I feel like that's like the number of ascended masters. And I, you know, like if he's one of my spirit guides, I'm, I, that was part of my question was who are they and you know, names and stuff, and, like, I just, I want to start opening up and reach a point, even yeah. in meditation, eventually, where I can see him and talk to him. And, yeah. Well, know. I'm going to convey yeah. what I'm, what okay. I think he's saying, because um, he's come through a few times in some of my sessions, but I, I never hear words, really. It's it's all energy talk. It's all wow. Love. So okay. I'm going to try my best to keep it together and not cry, because there's something about the energy I, I, that's just so beautiful. I it's amazing. Oh, no, Jamie cried. Jamie cried. Uh, family <laughs> hands. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whew. Okay. Um, see, listen, I can't even start. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> oh, okay. <Jamie>. Um, <laughs> he says, okay, um, first of all, he's thanking you for, for following your heart because oh. what's more important is 
she says, what you feel in your heart and what you feel connected to in your heart because it doesn't matter what you do in life, what you follow, he says, or what you practice. People are going to look at you. They're human in them. They're going to look Mm -hmm. at you and they're going to pass judgment. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do, he says, is to offer no return judgment. Yeah. Offer no return retaliation, yet always, he says, always offer perspective, always offer insight on what you experience. Mm-hmm. He says, with me, um, mm-hmm. you don't have to be like others. You don't have to walk around with a Bible in your hand to feel accepted and to know that you are loved. Mm-hmm. He says, but also those that that need that to feel their connection, that is their type, their perspective. Mm-hmm. So he says, offer no, re- no return judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, ex- uh, those who judge you, accept them how you want to be accepted. Mm-hmm. He, he also says, um, you have to... You have not. You have nothing to prove mm-hmm. to anybody. So don't live your mm-hmm. life that way. Also thinking, well, this is what I ex- what I experience, and I have to prove it. I have mm-hmm. to show you. He says you don't have to prove. You just have to be. Mm-hmm. If you follow, if you follow what you feel direct in your heart, directly connect to you, mm-hmm. in your heart and in your mind. Mm-hmm. That's all you can ask of yourself. He says, when you feel a connection to me, to your God mm-hmm. source, mm-hmm. if somebody falls away from you because of the way you connect to me, mm-hmm. um, he encourages you to offer love, mm-hmm. but also allow to pass. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm listening. So, My God is just Mm-hmm. He says, "Bring your gun back, girl." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my he says, "Don't, um, don't worry about the way." He says, "You follow what's truly in your heart. Mm-hmm. You will gain the best relationships, and you will also lose um, relationships too." Okay. But as long that as you honor part what of it. you feel, right? You being true to you is what truly matters in the end when you come home to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I had a really, there was one dream I ended up having that was pretty remarkable. Oh, come on, come on. Um, where it's just, it felt like I saw him walking in a group of people and I just kind of ran up to him and went under his arm and we were hugging and I just knew it was him. And it just mm. felt almost like he was an older brother. And, you know, having grown up in such an embedded culture of religion it was like you know I I don't know how to I just don't know how to I don't know it's not that like I know I don't have to prove anything and I that my email response to my brother-in-law today was more of just like I see this as being the truth you know we all have to be truths and whatnot and um I guess that's where I was at with it (laughs) wait did you ever watch the uh, Jesus interview on YouTube I'm sorry, the Jesus interview? Yeah. Yes, I did, and I loved it. That was actually what brought me into, I would, I mean, telling you, just starting with the YouTube videos, this is what really started triggering just, like, my confidence in being able to come out and say, you know, intuitively, these were things that I feel I felt too. for a long time. Good for you. Yeah. I mean, uh, to me, that was a very powerful interview. I shared it. In fact, that, my, that, I shared that, it. That's what healed me, helped to heal me so much. Right. It did, and it really did. I shared it on my Facebook page out of one of the other Channeling Eric members on the Facebook group. It said, Eric's encouraging me to share this one. And so I, I took the stands and I shared it on my Facebook page. Which, I mean, I feel like I've come out of the closet. Like, it's almost like well, so how do you realizing. Like that? How do you like that hate, hate mail, girl? <laughs> nail me? I know, what do you think? right? Good, huh? I know. Yeah. I know. Well, I can't thank even. You, thank you what you deal in. with, Elisa. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you I don't so even much. Read it. I, I, I can't read I the know. comments on YouTube. It's just too hurtful. I know. And I'm still a I know. little broken. I'm still a little broken woman, and it, I just say I can't. I, know. I, I can't do it. You know. I just I have don't, to put I it out there, how, hope that I it helps people. And mm-hmm. you know, those that it doesn't help, it's just I don't even want to know about it. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm a. Uh, I'm my all my prayers. A coward, and love are, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, I, thank you so I, much. I, Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. And I guess we'll close now, guys. I really love you guys all. I want you to check out Eric's book, My Life After Death. I mean, if you really want to know what it's like to die, if you want to know what it's like being in heaven as a spirit, you need to read this book. So many people have said, I can't put it down. Best book I ever read. So check it out. And I want you to also go to our site, to, to uh, channelingeric.com, to check out the tour that we're going to have to eight cities. I want you guys to come to these cities because I need to hug all of you, okay? And yes, I yes, really yes. want you to check out Kim at kimbabcock.net. You've got to. Also, you know, every, not everybody was able to listen to this. Uh, so those who aren't and of course they're not listening right now because they whatever but um, I'm going to have all the archives of the podcast on Spreaker.com S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R which is speaker but with an R Spreaker.com and until next Thursday guys we will talk to you guys soon anything else you want to add Kim I just want to thank everybody that tunes in every week Um, So many people will come on Facebook and comment and thank you for these shows. And we thank you guys right back. We thank you guys for listening. Um, Without you guys, uh, we wouldn't be where we are with this show, with the blog, and um, the way that you guys share your stories about Eric, you know, keep it coming. It's it's incredible. So thank you all so much, and thank you, Elisa. It's been a fantastic show. Eric, thank you, and I love you so much, sweetie pie. I just... Miss you so much. He says he's being silly. He says I love you too, Mom. And doesn't it feel good to know Jesus had time for you tonight? <laughs> he's just playing. Oh, yeah, I feel I feel special. <laughs> All right, bye everybody. Until next time. Bye everybody. Bye. Good night. <laughs>